Lisa, a lone rider here in the Great Swamp, and I wanted to talk about drilling. Now, <coughs> this is a 1990s Cannondale R300, as you can see, uh, one of the years they made it in the U.S. Um, pretty old bike, had a lot of hard use, but it's still going strong, and it's been rebuilt with vintage parts. This would have had brifters at the time, but I went with um, these type of shifters for a reason, as you can see. Um, they make an excellent platform for drilling. And what drilling is, is just a slime for um, parts, typically aluminum parts, that have been drilled out uh, for both lightning and aesthetic purposes. Um, you can see my spacer here, too, is also drilling. Um, now, this was all done freehand. A lot of times when people do drilling stuff, they have a jig, and um, I basically just uh, sat down with a cordless drill one day after a beer or two and decided to give it a try. Um, now, there's some things to say about drilling. One is that it doesn't really make your bike all that much lighter. Uh, it's mostly an aesthetic thing. I mean, if you really wanted to get lighter cranks, you'd get, like, carbon cranks or something. Uh, and then here we have our rear derailleur. Not only that, as you can see, in the side plate, but also around the pivot area. And some of the holes have been filled with various paint, black, red, that sort of thing. And I have, the, um, of course, the metal pulleys on there. Um, it doesn't really make the bike all that much lighter, but it has a nice aesthetic uh, touch, um, if you want to do that. Uh, that's kind of what I did. Uh, the second thing is, if you're not careful, you can ruin the bike, especially on something like these chain rings that are load-bearing. It's not usually an issue with something like a derailleur side plate, because the truth is, the, the, the rigidity comes basically from the edges of that. The, the, this metal part, I mean, you could totally skeletonize that, remove all the material in the metal, and it would still work. But uh, something like the chain rings are load-bearing, and I've seen rings bend under stress from people sprinting. I've seen gears in the back actually flex and crack. Um, a friend of mine broke a pair of SRAM that way going up the hill. Uh, you see these gears come with holes drilled in them, and it just it flexed right across where there were two holes across the, the central portion and, and split. Um, so if you were to do drillium on a chain ring like this and make the holes really big, or do it on uh, these parts here where it's really thin, or you were to drill out the crank arms or the, the cranks, you could conceivably have catastrophic parts failure, which would be, you know, you're asking for an accident. Um, I did a little bit of countersinking there. Not true drillium, but just uh, a little countersinking there along the front of the post as well. Um, so I was careful when I did this to just to use really small holes. They look a little larger than they are because I countersunk all of them, all of these holes. <laughs> and, um, you know, believe me, it took a long time. Uh, but I, I made sure to basically make the amount of material I was removing as small as possible. And that's precisely because there's good drillium and bad drillium. And bad drillium is where too much material is removed and it basically becomes unsafe. It's one thing to say, I'm going for the aesthetic look, I want you know, the big holes, I want a cloverleaf cut out, whatever. That's fine. That's it, it's great for aesthetics, you know, if you want the bike to hang on a wall. Uh, but if you want to actually ride it on the street, subject it to use on a somewhat regular basis, uh, you want to keep the holes as small as possible. Um, and that said, I mean, if these rings ever break, it's a standard, you know, 130 bolt pattern Shimano crack, so I could certainly get new rings. Um, I would avoid doing drilling with any particularly rare parts or vintage parts that are hard to replace. Um, just because. So, there you go. That's an introduction to drilling.